Todd, the founder of Stash Products and the inventor of the Rio, the product that we're always using in all of our shows, basically. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for having me too. Rod, you've you've changed the the gabbing game for a lot of people. Like a, a lot of people, the Rio has changed their life. It's changed the way we smoke weed. I used to make a, a, a wax pen, as I, I think Troy, you might remember, stash pen. Um, that's what I start off with, and it was really hard to really um, distinguish myself in the crowd because everybody was doing that at the time, and that was a very easy product for people to copy. And um, I got lost in the crowd very quickly, and uh, I wanted to make something that I used every day because when we would go to these trade shows, I, I heard a customer of mine saying, we went to my room to hang out and sesh, and I pulled out a torch, I pulled out a rig, and he was like, well, wait a minute, you don't use your stash pen? And I was like, well, I do, but that's if I don't have a torch in my, in my rig, like my torch, I'm a torch guy. So from that point on, I said, you know, why are we selling things that are like a dab or close to a dab? Why don't we try to figure out a way to give someone that portable dab that they get from the torch? You know, I saw people carrying these big Pelican cases and thousands of dollars worth of glass. And I'm like, man, I would never carry my head of glass out the out my room of glass. So we we thought the Rio would be a, a great middle for everybody um, to be able to carry it around. You can get nice glass for it or just use that. And so what is that? Is that something that's coming out soon or ba you got the glass? No, the there? base. Yes, this will be the base that we're going to be doing in the future, which is the, the new Rio base. Um, there's no more in the back. It's um, it's all one piece now. There's no more holes. These little grooves here play a gigantic role. Um, if you, I don't have an old base with me right now, but if you're left or right handed, if you're holding it like this or you're holding it like this, these grooves allow you to literally the smallest amount will help that thing not fall out of your hand. When it's just straight like this, um, a little bit of water, a little bit of hand sweat could allow the weight to al allow the product to fall exactly so so with this a tiny a bit of geometry right here um it i mean even for like a a person that does mountain climbing is kind of where i got the the depth sizes the depth size is really all a mountain climber really needs to hold himself up so that's how i got this depth was um to really look at like hey what do i need to be able to hold my own body weight could me or let's say a, a mountain climber hold or support his weight if they had only that and i think the answer would be yes um so that's because again i mean when you get this base really try and like tear it out of your hand like really put the effort into it don't like half ass it really like i told the guys here i said here try and tear this out of my hand and i said put the other one in my hand and that one they tore out of my hand very easily this one try and tear it out it's just it's just a good comfortable grip it's a no. perfect grip now so, I'm going to win all the Rio Wars, man. I'm going to win them all. Nobody's ripping this thing out of my hand ever. Again. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. And then the, the tether, we, we just added that. You can buy that on the website. It's It works well. It saves mm -hmm. the carbs. It's called Save the Carbs. You know? Save the Carbs. Nice. Because, man, people break break carbs. It's, it's not even funny because people are coughing when they use the Rio. Um, they cough and the cough makes the any carb really bouncy and wobbly especially the older one it's top heavy look at you rod crushing that rod going to town brother look at that <coughs> that's how you dab damn that was a big ass fucking dab you put in there man like Troy goes about twice as big as me, and I think he went about twice as big as oh, right. what Troy hard. usually does. That was crazy. <coughs> I do like point fours, point threes. Whew. Yeah, that's my boy. <laughs> you can you can have those, man. I'll, I'll stay on the smaller side. That's fucking great, man. Yeah, I think you guys probably smoke throughout the day more than I do. I'll smoke maybe three or four times maximum all day. Technically, vape. Just so everybody's watching knows we're you know we're, we're vaping that stuff. But yeah, man. What uh, Rod? We got a we got a question from uh, from one of our editors. Wanted to know what inspired the Rio shape. You know, it's a great shape. What what brought that about? Um. Well, a I didn't want it to be uh, another another puff go. 
I didn't want it to be another because a lot of that shape is would end up looking like kind of like that round puffco shape, I guess you could say. Yeah. The thing about the glass, <clears throat> the glass sitting the way it needs to under the real torch or any torch on the market ultimately is this. So you ultimately you're getting a square out of this out of this combination of glass anyway. Even if I were to use a round a round shaped glass, it would just end up being like a square that got into a smaller square at the top. There's no way to go around that square thing if you're going to have this torch being this way. Um, and this is our proprietary torch, but um, we thought about other ways of you know booting it into the base and doing things of that nature but we know the back draws of that and then any torches on the market that you would just put like this straight up you're going to get like a quarter of the dabs out of the out of you would out of the rio because in rio you're getting i think troy actually did this we've come to find out you can get anywhere from 55 out of like 78 dabs out of one rio fill um so there's really no real portable dab rig on the market that battery or anything else that can really compete with that even like the torches like the blazer and that they put out so much butane that after you heat it up maybe three or four times you're going to have to refill that, that that blazer because it puts out such a strong flame that thing is just zero to a hundred there is no like zero to 60 on the on the on the blazer it's just like big flame all the time and big flame equals a lot of fuel totally and, and I and I did do that in my initial initial Rio review, and I think it was like seventy three on my first time, and then seventy eight on my second time, and then sixty eight on my third try, try. And it's ridiculous. I don't remember the last time I filled my Rio, but I know that I filled. Like, I had that problem too. I know I filled like two of my Dynavap torches in the last week. I filled I filled the, the big shot in the last week. I have that issue all the time, man. I, I never remember the last time I filled it. We'll go to a trade show, like you guys know. I'll fill it up as soon as I land. I'll buy a can of butane. We'll go around, give everybody at the show dabs, everybody at the after party dabs that wants to try it. And I'm still like, do I even need to fill this thing up again? And then I'll go a second day like that. And then a third day, I'm like, man, I'm ch chancing it. And I don't fill it up. And then by the time I leave, I use that can of butane one time. It's like five days in Vegas, and it's like, and given like half of Vegas, dad, and I still used one one can. I'm the exact opposite. I couldn't tell you how many um, hits I get off this thing. I just know that we use it throughout the day and evening, every single day and night, and uh, I fill it up every six to seven days. Oh wow! See, I don't. I, but see, also too, this is what I tell people. I built the Rio and made the Rio for portable dabs. When I'm at home. What I use every day, all day, is my email. And it's not something I even created. It's not my idea. None of that. It's just I'm I'm a, I'm a, an efficient guy. Um, and I'm about, hey, I'm going to put, I just died on Overwatch. And I have 38 seconds. Exactly. I'm going to run to my smoking room, slab a dab in that junk, get and clean it out real quick and run back to my controller and like have 10 seconds before the game kicks me out or something. So like I'm all about that. Like if I had to torch it up and do all that and clean my banger, it just it's a different process. And so I'm at home. It's a, about efficiency. I keep my email on. Um, I don't ever really use my reel at home. It's at work or in my car or when I'm traveling. Um, so maybe that might be the difference. But I do use it at work at least. I don't know two two times at least while I'm at work. <laughs> No, this is my primary at home and out, honestly. Um, if I, I have some electrics that I like, because I'm, I'm a fan, I started off on those until I got the Rio. Like I was an electric rig guy. And then when Troy taught me how to use the Rio, I was like, holy shit, that is another another level. So do you um, do you call, do you clean your banger ever with your torch too? I used to until I started getting all that cruddy, chazzy, white, nasty shit on the bottom. And so I stopped. And now um I'm using the the dark crystal with just a little bit of heat from the torch, and I haven't had any of that shit build up on the bottom yet. Yeah, I just I just, I just say not to because it takes up so much of your fuel. But um, I used like I'll use a blazer if I ever want to like um, yeah. um, to clean my nail completely. I just don't ever get it red hot ever because that's how you get the the white chasings when you get like numerous times of 
red, red hot, hot is just how you get that that white stuff. Yeah. That's impossible to then uh, yeah. remove, really. The deventrification. Yeah. One of, one of the things I love about you, Rod, is you're you're clearly one of us. You're one of the people that uses these things. You're not just somebody who's got a company because there's a there's an opportunity like. No. You clearly, <laughs> you clearly beat the hell out of these things and design them for us, man. I love that. I mean, like I said, it's it's it's, it's my main rig everywhere. Like I'll take it like you. I'll take it on the go and in the car, but. Even at home, it's it's what I grab all the time. Troy, you're the same way, right? Yeah, much, I use yeah. I use mine at home. Uh, I alternate. Like I, I have I have an email that vapes flower. Yeah. And I can do dabs and flower at the same time. Yeah. But I still I still reach for the Rio for for a a dab experience just because like the the on courts torching ritual has something to it. Like there's something. Nothing beats torch, man. It's dynamic. Like yes. every every dab, even if I have the same three grams of, of rosin that I'm going through with the Rio, every dab, even if I'm doing doing them same same size, every dab can be a little bit different. Yeah. Just be just because of the the subtle differences in timing with the torch. Yeah. And that's what I don't like about uh, like about electric, unless it's from my e nail. Um, it's the inconsistency. Um, because, you know, I don't load that 0.3 or 0.4 every time. Sometimes I go smaller. Sometimes I go bigger. So that makes a huge difference. You know, torch, it's just me leaving on there a couple extra seconds or taking it off a couple extra seconds. It's that much, that big of a difference, you know. And you can't do that with medium heat setting on something, you know. Oh, just put it on blue. Like, what? What does that even mean? Like, what do you mean <laughs> put it on blue, bro? What is that? What temperature is that? Oh, uh, 438. But like, like, doesn't that, but that determines like how hard I'm breathing in through it and how much oil should be in that bucket. There's, there's so much that goes into temperature of oil in, inside, uh, of uh, inside of like the reservoir temperature and, the uh, the dab scale tool, um, is also my next one too. Um, this is the first dab scale tool on the market as well. Um, something that you can actually. You can go in there and do it that way. Um, you can go in this way. Um, and then if you do hold it in your hand, um, it, you could have a variance of the temperature of the weight. Um, but if you, if all you do is get it weighed out and put it down for one second, it'll beep. And then you can go to direct dab and you'll get true, true, true temp, uh, true, true, uh, weight of what you're dabbing. So then at that point, somebody knows, Hey, I'm getting a 0.3 when I go in there because like when you go in there, like you said, you don't know how much Troy is consuming, nor does Troy know how much he's consuming at the end of the day when it comes to oil. Um, and then this tool um, and this kind of thing was actually really inspired by um, people like Fuck Combustion and the people that watch your kind of show because people like me that just kind of go out as much as my dab tool can hold is how much I dab. How much I dab? It's like, how much do you dab? Whatever my dab tool can hold. Sometimes I go in twice for that. Um, but some people are like, well, I like to stay in between 0.1 or 0.2. And I'm like, how do you even know that? They're like, I don't. And I'm like, so there's a huge need for that. You guys told me a lot of a lot of your customer base likes micro dose. And I didn't even know. I thought that was just a mushroom thing. Um, I didn't know right. that microdose uh, THC so I was like oh okay so there's a and there's a need for that I think even people that are they're taking one gram dabs prove it you know I, that's how I say it. let's see you say that taking one gram dab um, don't just stretch out a point two uh, of some shatter uh, to to make it look like a foot long and, and drop it in right uh, you know so that thing I'm, I'm excited these 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 items to come out yeah me too. So yeah, we don't want to be a rebrand company. We want to be innovative. What's up, Troy? Happy Friday, Jerry. Good to see you, man.